Monica and you're watching Dog Eared Musings and today we're kind of doing a book suggestion segment that is about two of my favorite things reading and food so books that have to do with food and there's gonna be a kind of collection of cookbooks but also some fiction and non-fiction books that are surrounding food now the first book is uh, Molly Katzen's Moosewood Cookbook, the new one. Molly, Ka Molly Katzen is kind of like known for being kind of one of the earthy, crunchy, hippie, but like kind of popularized like vegetarian cooking in the 70s, kind of helped it become mainstream. The whole reason why this book is important to me and is on my cooking like must-haves. When my mom and my dad were first dating, my dad actually cooked a recipe that is from this cookbook. Not the specific edition specifically, I think that their original copy of this cookbook got too worn out and so they had to buy a new one, but the falafel and tabbouleh recipe that Katzen wrote was one of the first dishes that my dad ever made for my mom. And I think Growing up, food was always my love language. And so when I found out that this was that recipe, I kind of accidentally stole this cookbook from them and it's been living on my shelf ever since. So then the second book is Priya and Ritu Krishna's Indianish. Now this book is important to me because I didn't start really enjoying cooking until I graduated college and I think a lot of why I really didn't enjoy cooking was because I was intimidated by it, specifically because I was intimidated with kind of cooking food that was relevant to my cultural identity. My mom's side of the family is from India and I've always kind of felt like trying to replicate dishes that my mom or grandma made for me it felt like it was impossible and when Priya Krishna kind of came out with this cookbook it felt like she and her mom co-wrote this book that really made it seem like it was accessible for a newbie. There are so many ways to make adaptations for recipes where if you're in a grocery store that doesn't have Indian ingredients in it, you can make accommodations and they do a really good job of making it so that Indian cooking feels, and cooking in general, feels less intimidating. This is one of those books that really got me to love cooking and also to feel like I was more connected with my cultural identity, especially at a point of time when I was living far away from home. A nonfiction book that I also kind of have in my culinary canon of books is the memoir written by Japanese breakfast lead singer. I was right, it was in the show's honor. Um, which there's a seven days of fashion week that sh video that she did recently that is just stunning and amazing and you should go watch it. But first finish watching this video. But her memoir, Crying in H Mart. Now, I know that this book has been so hyped up but I think that this book is well worth the hype. When you think about kind of reclaiming cultural identity and reconciling grief, thinking about music and food and how that is able to connect you with your family as well as your own personal identity, I think Zahner does an amazing job in talking about all the beautiful parts, um, but also kind of the gritty parts that come with that. I've heard that the audiobook is amazing, but the physical uh, book also is incredible too. It's a book that I'm always thinking about and I feel like I wish that I could live forever so that I could reread it a lot. The final book that I'm going to recommend for now, because I feel like there are so many books that you can think about when connecting 
to food is one of my all-time favorite books, The Abundance by Amit Majmadar. So this is a story that focuses on a South Asian family's kind of experience with grief. After receiving a unfortunate diagnosis, it kind of does split perspective, but in a way where all of the characters receive full attention. And I think that why I really loved this story was there are some books that come to you in periods of your life where you just feel like seen in a way and I know that that's insanely cheesy but I think after reading this book I've never wanted to write a letter to an author before reading this book I wanted to like genuinely thank the author for writing because I think that it is another exploration of family and the beauty and kind of also the grief and things that you wish you could say that sometimes are left unsaid and all of the fun joys of communicating with people and I think that Amit Majmadar kind of expresses that in a way that is much more coherent than how I am trying to communicate about this book. So those are all the books about food and I'm getting really hangry so I'm gonna go and try to see if we have any snacks in the fridge. I'm gonna leave you here for this week and feel free to comment below if there are any books that you love that are about food, whether they're cookbooks, nonfiction, or fiction. There are so many out there. I'll see you next week. This has been Dog-Eared Musings. I'm Monica. Happy readings!